I was lucky enough to live in a large house when I was a kid. My house had a side room towards the back side of the first floor. My siblings called it the second living room because that's basically what it was. It had an old recliner, a small table, and a mid-sized couch. That's it. We hardly ever sat in there. One morning, I woke up sick. I told my mom and she told me to take the day off from school and stay home. My siblings had to be at school and my parents worked, so that meant I had the house to myself. I laid around in bed for a few hours until around 10.30 a.m. when I heard steady walking coming from the first floor. I thought nothing of it at first, as I just assumed maybe my mom went in late to work like she did sometimes. I needed something to eat anyway, so I stood up and went downstairs to the kitchen. I made it about three feet in front of my kitchen's walk-in doorway when I locked eyes with not my mom, but a six-foot tall man wearing raggy and ripped up clothes. I was frozen in fear. I just stood there. It was only for a few seconds, but it felt like hours had passed. The guy just stood there and watched me too. No expression or anything. I eventually pulled myself out of the shock and bolted from my bedroom upstairs. I didn't hear him following me, but I got in my bedroom and locked the door and moved a dresser in front of it anyways. I pulled out my phone and instead of calling 911 like I should have, I called my mom. I screamed into the phone telling her someone was in the house trying to kill me. She told me not to leave my room for any reason and call the police, so I did. Fifteen minutes later, the police finally show up, as I could see through my bedroom window. I watched them enter the house before I left my room to run down to them for safety. I told them everything that happened. They did a quick search of the home and found nothing. Not a single person or broken window or door. My parents came home shortly after and were furious that the guy had not been caught. I was extremely angry as well, but I was also relieved that I was alive. The police began packing their things, but as one of the last officers was on the way out, he noticed a Walmart bag sticking out from under our couch. It was that couch in the side room that no one ever used. And, well, what do you know? We found hundreds of trash bags and week-old rotting food under the couch, along with some of our personal items like wipes, water bottles, and we even found a bag of piss. Whoever that man in the kitchen was had been living under our couch for weeks. I can't comprehend how none of us had smelt any of the garbage that was piled up under there for the entire time he was there. The fact that he never made a single noise under there just baffles me. We've since cleaned that room out completely and turned it into a breakfast nook with wooden chairs so no more people can break in and find free housing in them. I go off to college in a few months so I won't have to live in fear of that incident happening again for much longer, but I still think about it every time I wake up with a cough. Although it doesn't seem like it, this happened quite a while back, probably over 10 years ago. I was in the later years of high school and was home alone. My parents were at a wedding that required them to stay at a hotel, and my brother worked the night shift. At that time, my family lived in a very well-known East Coast city, inside of a blue-collar neighborhood that was just starting to take a nosedive. As a teenager, I was a bit of a loner. I wasn't a nerd or anything. I was a big dude who had friends and went on dates, but I'm naturally an introvert, so I cherished the rare alone time that I got. This weekend, I was looking forward to engaging in my normal empty house routine. Play some PlayStation on the big screen TV, order some late takeout dinner, and watch some Dragon Ball Z. Then around 2 a.m., fall asleep on the couch with my old dog, Cecil. Cecil was an old beagle and had been in our family for about eight years now. He was quiet and peaceful and spent his time begging for food and sleeping. Unlike most beagles, Cecil never howled or barked. He was more than content to rest his head on your lap and spend the night there. 
Anyways, it was about 1am now, and I had just finished the last slice of pizza and was starting to doze off on the couch when I hear a bang coming from the back alleyway. I didn't think much of it. Anyone who's lived in the city knows noises happen at all moments of the night. Cecil's head popped up off my lap and the hair on his back stood up. He's always been a bit skittish, so I calmed him down and started dozing off again. But not more than two minutes later, I hear another bang. Cecil did something I never saw him do before. He leaped off the couch and ran like the winds towards the door leading to the basement barking and growling like a dog twice his size. The look on his face reminded me of a German Shepherd canine unit. I'd never seen him act like that before, which got my adrenaline pumping. Through the dog's barking, I can now make out a persistent banging. There was a seldom used door in the basement that led to our back alleyway. It was old and rusted and was hard to open, even with a key, and it made a lot of noise. I suddenly realized that someone was trying to break into my house through my basement door. For those who haven't lived in a bad neighborhood, it's usually general knowledge that if someone tries to get into your house and moves on after they realize the door is locked, they only wanted your stuff. But if someone is persistently trying to get into your house despite the door being locked, well, they want you. <clears throat> Knowing this, I rushed upstairs immediately to grab a heavy wood baseball bat that I kept under my bed for situations like this. Then I head down to my basement. I probably should have ran, but I was a macho teenager with a tough guy complex, and I had nowhere to go. While I'm heading down the stairs to my basement, Cecil blows past me with the speed and aggression of a dog half his age. Suddenly, I hear a man's voice say, Oh fuck, and the banging stopped. I didn't call the cops or anyone else, which was probably the dumbest thing I've ever done. I just sat up for the rest of the night with the bat in my hand. My brother came home that morning and I told him what had happened. He went to the basement door to take a look and when he gave it a tug to open it, the whole door fell off. This psycho was one good shove away from getting in my house, but old Cecil scared him off. I'm pretty sure that lazy, fat old dog saved my life. When I tell this story to people, they dismiss his actions as a dog doing what a dog is supposed to do. But I can tell you that Cecil never barked or moved that fast in his life. It was almost like he knew the urgency, like he knew that door was going to give. A few years back, we had to have him put down, because he just had no will to live anymore. Before the injection, I got a moment alone with him. I thanked him one last time for his friendship and for what he did that night. At this point, I was a grown man with a wife and kids. But I'm convinced none of that would have happened without old Cecil. I was around 13 at the time of this story. I still live in this house, and I still don't know what this was. A thunderstorm had just started, and due to our area being in Tornado Alley, I always slept downstairs in my dad's room, just to be safe because I'm a heavy sleeper. It was around 12.43 AM, sitting on my phone watching YouTube to pass time. As the rain hit the house, I heard my dad's intense car base pull up into the driveway. I lived in a small town and everybody knows everybody and he was the only one with a car like that. I assumed he would be coming downstairs to sleep since he had been working all night. And so I collected my things and my dog and sat at the edge of the bed waiting. After waiting for a few minutes, I ended up walking over to the window that faced directly towards the driveway. Through this window, I could see the entirety of the driveway, so there was no way any car in the driveway wouldn't be seen. But there wasn't a car. There was nothing. 
I thought I had probably just mixed up a car passing on the highway next to us, because I remember my dad had also said that he would only be home around 2 a.m. I walked over and sat back down, but almost immediately I realized the car bass sound never left the driveway. I was spooked, but eventually I thought nothing of it, seeing as people park randomly around houses a lot. A few minutes passed by, and I heard my dad's cough in the garage. I thought he was home, and I was relieved because the storm was beginning to pick up. But it only frightened me more when I realized that I never heard the garage door open. I was too spooked to look out the window again, and so I waited. A few minutes passed by, and the rain now hitting the house harder, with thunder and lightning getting louder and brighter. I heard my dad's voice call out my name softly. At that moment, I realized that there was someone in my house, or something. I had frozen place, listening. I turned and looked at my dog, noticing his confused look towards me as if he didn't hear anything. I slowly sat back down and just laid as still and quietly as I could until I eventually passed out. I woke up at 4 a.m. and immediately ran to the window and saw my dad's car and so I ran upstairs. I told him everything that had happened. And I don't believe in ghosts or anything, but I knew something had called my name that wasn't my father that night. I can't help but wonder what would have happened if I had walked up those stairs and followed the voice. We don't know what really happened that night but I can't help but feel uncomfortable in my own house now.